Well, if I didn't get what I want, I'm just gonna have to act out even more. I'm gonna prank some more toilets. I had seen the description that the place was haunted, but I didn't know if we'd actually see a ghost up here. That's so cool. It's been three weeks since the last Sims update and the game's still broken. Game's still broken, but gosh darn it, we're, we're gonna play because I'm honestly really impatient and I just want to play The Sims. So let's hop into episode four of our high school years Let's Play. Got some interesting lighting going on right now because I'm pretty sure we blew a circuit running our air conditioning, so hey, no mind. The last we left off, Variety had a, a not so great prom experience. I'm honestly amazed by this. I told her to turn this off and she's sleeping through it. I think it's because she has the, the loud phase that she's going through. So who says that doesn't come with perks? And as we're jamming out, we're taking out some of the pictures that we took last night at the pier, where we see those, well, kinda, kinda see those, those spooky red eyes underneath the pier. Meanwhile, Variety has gone to Rain and told him, I'm hideous. My face is a mess. I can't go anywhere looking like this. I think that prom wasn't great. She kind of got ditched twice, first on the way there, and then even afterwards. And our little socially awkward bean probably thinks it's something to do with her. But Rain doesn't know this. He's just gonna tell her, like, just fine, like, don't overreact, you're, you're completely normal. So we're just gonna check. So let's see what's going on on Social Bunny. I am shooketh. Savannah sent us a mean message, your follower count and you are the same, a big zero. I mean, that's fair, but I haven't really been trying to gain followers, that's so mean. Meanwhile, we have Darling who is still trying to get in with us. But honestly, at this point, Variety is at the start of her own personal villain era, and she's just kind of blocking everyone out. And I see, looks like Jackie ditched us for another one of those euphoric pillow fights that everyone's going on about. So we're posting about the situation last night, it says post about travel. I'm gonna imagine it as the lack of traveling as a group. We're stressed, they're gonna know it. Being out and about could be so stressful, I need the calm peacefulness or home or I will lose it. That is a whole mood. And we're getting a call. I love when the game does stuff for me. We've gotten a call from someone named Reagan Bateman. Now, this is a sim that I may have added in between the last two episodes as I was figuring out Rain's whole friend group situation. But yeah, we will go to the flea market and we'll hang out with this with this old friend of Rain's. I feel like right now he is seeing his sister spiral. He doesn't know what it's about. He's been sneaking out. He's been real quiet since she came back from prom. So he's saying, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go out. And Variety, my dear, you can you can handle yourself. Get that whole bathroom situation figured out. And we are going to get acquainted with this friend of Rain's. So we could see they have a uh, negative romance. We're gonna we're gonna do a quick vibe check because it seems like we haven't really spoken with her in a while. But even still, they have a really high friendship. I'm also just super biased, and I think she's freaking adorable. I love these glasses. So who is this person? We have quite a bit of history with them. We're deeply connected to her, but we've also been hurt. And on her side, she has memories of the two of them ditching prom together and having a fun party at some point. And we're learning a few things about Reagan, despite this bald dude chilling and sitting at our table. We can see that she has the sage personality type. She seeks wisdom. She looks for the truth in every situation. She's also a genius. She's also self-assured and a paranormal investigator at the Federal Bureau of Spooky Investigation. I'm loving, I'm loving all the, all the spooky vibes. Maybe not the parental figure of the year doing bubble blowing with your teenage sister, but can't really win them all. Let's do what we came here to do and let's haggle with a vendor. I think we can technically do it for food. We're really winning this whole flea market thing. I was also bad at my job, but we have the task to haggle with the vendor. So we just successfully did that and we, we, we haggled for some food that is way, way too spicy for us. But you know what? You can't, you can't argue with the price of free. Lucky for us, the busking station cleared up. We haven't really had a whole lot of luck at the, at the pier. There's a lot more people here. The rain is going to be a little hopeful. And look at that. We haven't even 
solicited for tips yet, and he's already he's already gotten like 14 bucks. And it may not be a whole lot, but that's two spicy meals. Or the $10 that Variety just spent on this lactose-free food. Look at that little sriracha bottles. It seems to be about that time. Reagan's over here, passed out on a bench. But maybe time to hit that old dusty trail and just head home. It's been an almost too normal day out, especially compared to everything Variety has kind of dealt with in, in the last couple of days. It's honestly been so normal that Variety, she just, she doesn't want to go back to the house, even though Rain and his friend are enjoying some old-timey drama TV and getting flirty. I'm gonna leap into that. Variety's literally just set a pile of leaves on fire. If Pyromaniac was a trait, because I think this girl would, would have it unlocked. But one thing I am curious in, again, just keep it in the spooky mood and, and honestly keeping in the whole lighting things on fire mood. We're headed over to this totally not haunted house, the Booms Bluff Mystery House. It's honestly one of the things that, for me, just continues to give kind of Pacific Northwest vibes, and specifically like the Santa Cruz boardwalk, as well as the mystery spot that's up in Santa Cruz. And maybe I just have Santa Cruz on my brain because I was just there this weekend. I also have to say, I love the fact that she has autonomously added fire dance to her little cue in her sleep. She's living her best pyromaniac life here. Meanwhile, Rain seems to be living his best negative romance life. These, these two, they just can't overcome this. But they're making spooky cookies, and if that's not romantic, I don't... But it's 8 p.m. Do you know where your kid siblings are, Rain? No, you don't. She could have been freezing to death, but he's so focused on the spooky cookies. So I know this is just the game glitching and making social bunny posts for your active sims when they're not supposed to, but your girl is even pretending that she's had a euphoric pillow fight. That FOMO and fear pressures, it's something else. And listen to these old folks telling us they couldn't get out of the pool without a ladder. Hit the gym. Hit the gym. I'm about to hit you, boy. Oh, shit! A ghost! I had seen the description that the place was haunted, but I didn't know if we'd actually see a ghost up here. That's so cool. That's actually, like, super cute. And by cute, I mean I think we're becoming desensitized. <laughs> That's just one more thing to add to the list of weird phenomenon that have happened to this this poor this poor girl in the last like two days. She was just looking for an outing to clear her head and get away from whatever weird situation was going on with with Rain and his friend, who I think is left at this point. And then she ends up with another weird ghost sighting and is rewarded with spooky cookies. At this point, it's it's starting to feel like the universe is trying to tell her something. Honestly, I'd kill for some spooky cookies right now. Cookies and coffee. Not the most nutritious meal, but something about it does scream high school. But before bed, we are going to work on our awkwardness. Because the weekend is coming to a close. And for all the weird shenanigans and things that, that happened at prom, as well as after prom, Variety can't escape that forever, because there's school in the morning. Despite everything that's happened in the weird lead up to prom, she still has this want to chat with Jackie and figure out what the heck happened. Because your poor girl is socially awkward, she doesn't understand. She doesn't understand. I feel like for Rain though, he, he had a good day overall. He was in his element, he's feeling good about the decorations, and he's being afraid of disappointing his parents. Therefore, he's, he's continuing on his path to, to figure out his online diploma. Because it would be at 1 a.m. on a Monday morning that these fears really start getting to you. I feel like he's going to be dealing with this for a while, though. It's really the only way to resolve it is to have a conversation with your parents. Which you can't really do when, when one of them's missing. Oh dang, dude, get to work. I forgot he had a job, and he kind of just slept through a quarter of it. And he's back, just in time for spooky day. Which also means it's time for me to move my camera. So spooky day. So we are here for tricks and treats, most likely the tricks. We're gonna wear some costumes, and we're here for the spooky spirit, which I feel like we've been staying true to this uh, this episode. Staying on theme, staying on brand. I love this, I love this more students mod. The school already just feels so much more, so much more populated. But we are starting this Monday off with a bang. We're gonna prank some toilets. Okay, 
Uh, concern. Yes, I would also be thinking about Darling, who just walked into the stall you just pranked and started crying on the toilet. But this is now, like, the second, second or third time that just Darling has pushed boundaries with us. I mean, sneaking into our house to ask to be best friends for whatever reason. And apparently they're also just very, very unattractive in Variety's eyes. Because she is feeling, she's feeling repulsed from seeing a, uh, a certain sim nearby. We're actually feeling really hungry, so we're gonna grab a quick, quick little snack from our locker. Unfortunately, this happens to be right in front of the principal. But fortunately, we wanted to get caught. But we didn't get detention. We somehow avoided consequence. It didn't get detention. This game is really pushing me. Like, even when we want to get in trouble, it says no. It says, mm, no. What if, what if instead you didn't get in trouble and you didn't get what you want? Well, if I didn't get what I want, I'm just going to have to act out even more. I'm going to prank some more toilets. And then we're going to put a costume on. And since we are feeling, we're feeling very villainous today. Again, I feel like we're at the start of our villain era. We're now dressed as... Whatever evil scientist villain this is. I feel like that was a little underwhelming. What about a space ranger? Not even spooky. A smuggler? I feel like there's there's very little variety in these costumes. We'll just be an astronaut then. Because it reminds us of our mother. And maybe if we actually dress as outlandish as possible, we can, we can maybe get what we want, which is just attention. And we're going to chat to this Tommy Oaks guy, because he's the guy from prom that we actually thought was really cute. Even though we we do still be crushing on Jackie, we also think he's he's a bit of a cutie. We'll we'll do one, we'll do one of our, our school requirements here, and we'll actually just be nice to some people. This has also apparently earned us good manners. So I do feel kind of bad for the guy because we've been pranking so many toilets left and right. He's just he's depressed at this point. I can't really blame him. And another person who thinks we're immature. This is what we get for trying to be nice. You get all your toilets pranked. And attention! Your toilets are safe for now. You know, maybe we need to upgrade the classrooms a little bit since we have more students now. But something about sitting on the ground, adorably looking up at your teacher, it's just, it's so cute and wholesome. So maybe we don't. Maybe we don't change it. I was about to ask why this guy was wearing a jester hat, but this is, this is Arnie Arnold. This is, this is the guy. This is the guy. Got prom jester. And he's living it up, you know, good for him. Maybe he won't think we're immature. Him with his two wolves howling at the moon shirt. Oh dang, we actually think he's immature. My camera did something weird there, but we actually think he's immature. So people may think we're bad, but we're no Arnie Arnold. So maybe I can learn a thing or two from, from Arnie Dos. Oh, sweet free apple. We are hungry. Can I just say, I love, I love how this is considered a te detention with Ken leading the class. It's teaching us about fun. And our end of day report. We already had about as poor a day as possible. You might as well have been absent from class. I mean, we technically were. Not that the principal really cared until later in the afternoon. I don't know who The Sims thinks they're fooling, but no, no large group of teenagers like this is going to stay at school until six o'clock on Halloween. It's not gonna happen. There's spooky things to attend to. We're home just in time for bills. Concern. Ooh, that is, that is too real. Our bills are literally like more than two thirds of what we have. That's the beauty. That's the beauty of childhood and being a teenager is you don't have to know or think about these things. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say rain. That's uh, we're, we're leaving that one to you, buddy. We, meanwhile, we're gonna drink some drink, we're gonna haggle, and we're gonna buy some illegal fireworks. So somehow we got rejected from someone who we weren't even haggling with, so I gotta go for... Alright, let's get some of these guys. Let's... Let's set off some fireworks. Right next to the fireworks stand, because that's safe. I mean... Again! I feel like this girl's a pyromaniac. Zero, zero disregard. Or complete, complete disregard, zero regard for the safety of this poor firework salesman. Chaos rules. Aw, oh, heck yeah, it's time to admit we like mischief. The fact that we didn't before is honestly a problem. A lot of social bunny worthy things happened to Variety today. Let's, let's check it out. What could we, what could we post about? We're still just giving in to this, to this FOMO fear pressure. We, we have not touched a single pillow. 
But somehow we got followers. I don't know how. It must be the pillows. Aw, oh, Jesus. We had an apple from our locker for lunch. I don't know how this is the one social bunny worthy thing that happened to us today. But all right, we will do a, an energized narrative. Been looking forward to lunch, getting to see all my friends and just hang out and is the highlight of my school day. None of those things are true. We're gonna send some funny messages. Send that to the Sir Arnold II. Good old recycled joke here. Perfect. And you know what, Ken? We're feeling playful, we're feeling confident. That's that's just some quality, quality DMing right there. Curfew's about to start, but the jokesters are still in the lead. I feel like this is just one of those things where if you're not actively doing it, your team just loses. It's honestly just like group projects all over again. <gasps> We're just not doing too hot. We're tripping all over the place. We're extremely stinky. And we got some super creepy broken PC over here. Oh, those, those teeth and eyes are terrifying. But I feel like once again, we had high expectations for the night. And it just feels like one thing after the other has just been letting us down. Look at our poor, sad and tired little astronaut. Just nothing, nothing going her way. Meanwhile, poor Rain, the only spooky day festivities he's gotten to do have been dressing up as a, a Starbucks barista. Cause he's, he's tired. These bills are $2,800 out of our $3,100. He's, he's working his little booty off and he just, he's trying to tell her it's, it's not that hard. It's not that hard to just not skip class to get attention. Not that hard to not break curfew. And she's gonna get mad. She's gonna say pot, meat, kettle. Cause you talk about it's not that hard, don't skip class, don't do that. He's one to talk since he's straight up just dropped out of high school. She's gonna, she's gonna mock him. Not her fault that he became an uncool adult. She's gonna act tough like, like you don't understand, nobody understands. And Ray's gonna give into it a little bit because I really do feel like he's been trying, trying his best. He's saying, well, you, you stink like garbage. She's be like, well, you stink like garbage. Look at that smell. And this is where we get the good old sibling bickering. And he's just like, look, I'm, I'm literally trying my best. We have $300 dues in the bank right now. He just told her, please just, <laughs> it's 3, 4 a.m. I have work in a few hours. Please, please just do your homework and go to bed. And I think something in their argument ended up getting through to her because she's actually doing it. Maybe she realized kind of how dire their their household situation is. It's been a very short amount of time since since they've been without their mother. Who again was an astronaut. That pays good money. They don't got that anymore. I don't think she's done with her live fast troublemaker ways. But for now, she will she will do as Rain asks. And like ships passing in the night, she lays down. And he's off to his sad little barista job. And he got a promotion, though. Way to go, Rain. You know what? You've earned a bit of a bubble bath. Aw, oh, Variety, you poor girl. School is about to start. But six minutes to spare. That's where we're going to end things today. I feel like the stars aligned a little bit with this whole spooky day situation. We are having an increase in the spooky situation. We have a new player who has entered the fray. Is Reagan just a longtime friend, or does she hold a higher significance in this story? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm just really liking the underlying vibes of Copperdale, where it kind of feels like it's trying to be the CW's Riverdale slash Sabrina, but also it feels like a classic Stephen King novel, or maybe I'm just projecting. And if you want to know what happens next, please give the video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so that you can see the next time an episode goes up. And if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really cannot express how much I appreciate everyone's views and support here. Like, it seriously makes my day. So I hope you have a great rest of your day. And as always, I will see you next time. Bye.